So I saw a video that I Love Faces 1042 did with her daughter called the Perfect Palette Tag. So since I have like a babillion palettes, I decided that I would like to try this tag. So um, let's get started. Best packaging. The first one I chose for this was Marc Jacobs Beauty. Um, for this palette, I did not buy this project be project. <laughs> Okay, so the first one we have is Best Packaging. So here we have Marc Jacobs Beauty Eyeshadow Palette. I did not buy this one because of the packaging. I bought it because of the product and the colors of the eyeshadow. Later on when I was you know, playing with the eyeshadows, I just discovered that I love the packaging this packaging of this product. I can't talk today. Um, it's just so chic, so, you know, thin. It's so slim. Look at that. You can easily slip it into your purse. And it's not bulky at all, so it will not take up that much room. So, I, okay. One that I kind of did buy because of the packaging, which I know you shouldn't do, but, you know, it's so pretty is the limited edition Lorac Mint Palette. I am obsessed with the color mint right now. Um, it looks like a clutch. I mean, it just looks so cute. It just looks like a little purse. It just looks, it reminds me of an envelope clutch. And I just think it's just a beautiful color of mint and it's just really pretty, you know, packaging. Best color payoff. I just got this palette a few days ago, the Cream Couture one by Sigma. Um, just look how beautiful and bright those pastel colors are. It's just I have never seen colors like this in another palette or another eyeshadow at all. So this is why I had to have this palette because of the bright colors. Um, when applying them, I will suggest using an eye primer and a white uh, eyeliner pencil for a base so the color just really pops. I mean, if you don't use those, you kind of do lose the color just like a little bit. Not that much, but I just think uh, to get the full color out of it, uh, use a white eyelining pencil and cover it all over your lid so it makes a really good base. <laughs> the next one for best color payoff, I chose the first Naked palette by Urban Decay. Just look at that range of colors. I just um I chose this one also for best color payoff because you can use the eyeshadows with or without a primer and the color will still stay on forever and it will still look fresh and pop. There's three for this category. Um, Urban Decay Vice 2. Again, just a beautiful range of colors that just stay on forever. Uh, it's one of the reasons I love Urban Decay because their eyeshadows stay on forever whether you use a primer or not. The colors will still pop. Okay, the most versatile palette, which basically means that you can do almost any look. It will go good with school and work, good for going out at night as well. I chose the Naked palette because, I mean, it just goes from, oops. It just goes from dark colors to light colors. You know, the light colors are good for work, for school, for very subtle look. And the night colors, they're great for night looks. I, <laughs> the dark colors are great for night looks. And it's just, you can do almost anything with this palette. You are unstoppable with this palette. I also chose Vice 2 for the most versatile palette. For basically the same reasons, I just, you have your neutrals and, you know, your darker, more daring colors. Um, this palette is both matte and shimmer uh, colors, 
So I would say like, you know, half of it is matte and the other half is shimmer. So you just have a great mix and match there where you can use shimmer for night and matte for day. I honestly use shimmer like all the time. So it's just great for anything that you're going to go out and do. Best for traveling. This one was kind of a hard one. I mean, I always choose my makeup depending on where it is I'm going to go. The new one, uh, Marc Jacobs Beauty. Because like I said before, that is just that is so skinny. And you get seven colors and a mirror. And it's just, you can just slip it in your purse. It's not going to take any room up at all. Um, another one I put is uh, the Too Faced. Basically almost any Too Faced palette is good because you have a, you know, a range of what you can wear. And it comes with, you know, all, I love the Too Faced palettes because it comes with the cards in here for tips on which, you know, day, midday, and night look you can do. So, I mean, they have, you know, the day classic and fashion rose. It is kind of a space saver, too. You just pop it in there. It doesn't take up that, it doesn't take that much room. And for traveling, if you do need a little palette that has like a blush, a bronzer, and a highlighter and still will be a space saver, then Too Faced Natural Face has your bronze, your cream blush, your powder brush, your highlighter, your illuminizer. Take these two together. I mean, they're small still. It's still, you know, packable. <laughs> Biggest regret. I try not to regret any purchases or anything in life, so I will kind of change this category to um, palette I was most excited about and my heart kind of fell down in my chest out of disappointment when I opened the palette to see the color. Lorac Mint Edition. Okay, I love that it. it has four shimmers, a blush, a highlighter, and four mattes. I don't think the color payoff is that good right now. I mean, honestly, I wanted this palette because of that mint color and it's kind of just a really chalky color. I haven't experimented with it too much because when I first applied it to my eye with a primer underneath, I was just kind of really disappointed. Um, it might work if you use a white eyeliner pencil, but you know, it kind of faded really fast to, instead of a mint color, it becomes a chalky light blue white color. That's not meant to me. Best color names. If I had my Disney Sephora storybook palettes, those would be the top winners. I do have them, but they're at my mom's place. I, um, mom, I'm British now. Hello. Um, at my mom's place. One of the disappointing things about the palette is that there's this off peach, off orange, palish color something named Sebastian. Sebastian's color should be red. I mean, I know Ariel's color is a darker maroon type, but I mean, Ariel's can also be purple or green or something. And Sebastian's color should have been a bright red, not this off looking salmon color. Anyways, off of that rant, I will say right now, out of the palettes I have the best names is from the Vice. Two palette. This one almost wins because there is a color called Stash. It's a greenish brown color and it's called Stash. Basically, any names of the eyeshadow that Urban Decay uses make me smile, they make me laugh, they're just so unique. I toxic, damage, madness, X rated. They're like totally out of nowhere names but they fit the color. I also love the names of the cream couture palette. They're going with the macaron you know theme here and just the names go with that as well. Let's see. Apricot flower. I I don't know I love that name and it's probably one of my favorite colors out of this palette. Uh, same with cherry blossom and passion fruit. Um, blue chocolate, uh, violet whip, I just, I, 
they really went all out with the names to fit uh, macaron type flavors. My least used palettes are only least used because I haven't opened them yet because I just bought them. This one came out last year from the Disney store. Um, I got it off of eBay for really cheap because I never saw this palette last year when the Disney Villain Designers line came out. So I have, you know, the Disney Villains Designer line. This is only unopened because I am, you know, I just got it over the summer and I've been waiting to use it in October because I'm going to do a Disney Villain theme with basically all the Disney Villain makeup products I have. So this is the only reason why it's unopened and these ones I legit just bought these ones today they're brand new they're ten dollars each from uh, Walgreens but they're not in every Walgreens I went through two Walgreens and then into a third one I found them on the third one it, it's weird that the elf products are only at Walgreens because um, I'm in San Fran None of the Walgreens ever have e.l.f. products. Target has the e.l.f. products, but they don't have these palettes. So I don't know why it's Walgreens when every Walgreens I go to, and there's like a Walgreens on every block from where I am, they don't have e.l.f. at all. So I don't know why these palettes are only at Walgreens. But anyways, these are all unopened because I legit just bought them like 30 minutes ago. But I'm excited. So, and just by the packaging, by the look, I will say, I think they might be better than the ones that came out last year. I like the Waller, the water, the water color look designs here. I like the white. Uh, I'm excited. So there will be a review and a tutorial and whatever. If you have any questions, especially about these ones because they're brand new, please leave them below and I will do my best to answer them. Now I'm in the last category. This one is like the ultimate category. Your most used, most loved, the one that you would take if you were like stuck on the deserted island or something. Naked. The first one. Um, especially the half-baked. I haven't hit pan yet, but it's just really... It's the one that's mostly everywhere. Like all the loose shadows from that one is in this palette because I've used that one the most. Too Faced Pretty Rebel. I did just get this one a month ago, but um, Instigator has taken a big chunk out of it. I hope this was a somewhat enjoyable and maybe even helpful video. If it was, thumbs up, maybe, please. If you have any questions about any of these palettes or, you know, the ones I didn't even talk about, leave questions below. I will answer them. Okay, so October is Disney Villain Month. Please leave comments below of what Disney Villain inspired look you would like to see and I will do it. It will probably be a subtle look because that's what I like doing, but since it is October and villains, it may just be really bright, really pretty, really crazy. And so yeah, okay, bye.